Hi there, everybody. My name is Jeremy Krug, and the AP Chemistry 2022 uh, free response questions have been released, and so I'm going to work through some of these so that you can see the answers. Uh, once again, I'm a, an AP Chemistry teacher who's been successfully teaching AP Chemistry for the last 22 years. I am not AP. I'm not College Board, so their answers and their point distribution may be a little different from mine, but I'm going to do my best to work through this problem. Number seven which people have been saying has uh, been a pretty tough question. So we're going to take a look at number seven. This is a four-point question, and we're going to see how it goes. So here we have a Lewis electron dot diagram of the oxalate ion. So there's the C2O4 2 negative. So the question in part A is identify the hybridization of either carbon atom. So either carbon atom, it basically tells us that the hybridization uh, for, for each of those is the same. So I'll just do number one since it's since they're basically the same. So the point on determining hybridization is count the number of uh, sigma bonds attached to that atom and add in any unshared electron pairs that are touching that atom. Well, for carbon, we have one, two, three sigma bonds. So three sigma bonds, there are no unshared electron pairs touching that carbon atom. So 3 plus 0 equals 3, okay? Uh, by the way, that, that other bond is a pi bond. Pi bonds don't count in hybridization. So if you watch my videos, hopefully uh, you know that the number 3 corresponds to a hybridization of sp2. So that's the answer that you should have to get credit for this, sp2 hybridization. Carbon number 2 it is identical, so that would work for either one of these. Now for part B, we have a KSP question. It says in part one, write the expression for the solubility product constant KSP for the silver acetate. Now, or I'm sorry, the silver oxalate, oxalate. So what I would do is first of all, write the balanced equation for the dissociation of silver oxalate in water. So we have Ag2C2O4, and that is a solid. And when it dissociates, we're going to have silver ions and we're going to have oxalate ions. And ions are always aqueous in solution. And we balance this by, you know, there are two silvers, so we have two right there. So now we can write the equilibrium constant expression for this. And once again, any equilibrium constant expression is just products over reactants raise the powers of the coefficients, and of course leave out solids and liquids. So that's important in this because you don't want to have a denominator. It's silver ions squared because of the two right there, multiplied by the oxalate ion. So when you have that, that is the KSP expression, and that should get you full credit for part one. Now part two, Asked to calc ask you to calculate the molar solubility of silver oxalate in neutral distilled water. Well, you know, uh, like I've shown in my in my videos here, uh, silver oxalate we don't know what the molar solubility is. So let's call that X. And if that's the molarity of 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 what's uh, take your silver oxalate in solution, your silver ion is is two X because there's a two right there. That the molar ratio is a two to one. Oxalate is, is, is just a 1x. So I'm going to plug these values into the equilibrium constant expression. Ksp is given to us in the problem. It's 5.40 times 10 to the negative 12th. So I just have to plug and chug at this point. There's my Ksp. And the silver ion is a 2x. And that's quantity squared. The oxalate is x. And so when I evaluate this, I have 4.4 or 5.40 times 10 to the negative 12th equals, you know, that's 4x squared times x is 4x cubed. So I have to divide both sides by 4 and take the cube root. When I do that, x equals 1.11 times 10 to the negative 4th. In our original expression, we said that x was the molar solubility. So that is the molar solubility of silver oxalate, just that in moles per liter. 
Okay, so now we can go on to part three. And this is an interesting question because it says that the molar solubility of this stuff, of silver oxalate, increases when it's dissolved in 0.5 molar perchloric acid instead of neutral distilled water. Write the balanced net ionic equation for the process that occurs in, in solution that causes this increased solubility. Well, we have to remember that perchloric acid is a strong acid. And anytime you have strong acid added to anything, it means you have a bunch of H plus ions swimming around in solution. And the hydrogen ions, these H plus ions, are going to react with some of the oxalate ions that are also swimming around in solution. And when we do this in a two to one ratio, it's going to create some oxalic acid. Now oxalic acid is a weak acid, and so it doesn't dissociate very much. And so, you know, that's aqueous, all your ions are aqueous, but you know what? This oxalic acid is also quite soluble because, you know, acids are, are soluble. And so this is aqueous. And so uh, what's happening is when this reaction takes place, oxalate ions are essentially being removed from solution. And what happens when you remove oxalate ions from solution? Well, think about this in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. Back to the equation, if we remove some of this oxalate right here, well, removing something is going to shift equilibrium in that direction. So that means it's going to shift equilibrium to the right, and we're going to be able to dissolve more of this silver oxalate. And so that's what you want to say, that the oxalate ions are being removed from solution. And so by Le Chatelier's principle, and I'm not going to write all of this because you heard the explanation, hopefully, because of Le Chatelier's principle, it's going to shift the reaction to the right, uh, allowing more uh, 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 more of the silver oxalate to dissolve. And so that's the basic idea here. This was a four point question. And so if you're looking at your point breakdown, it would be just one point for each part, one point for the hybridization, one point for your correct KSP expression to make sure it's written as an equation to get the full credit. Also one point for your molar solubility and one point for your overall net uh, ionic equation. You, you normally don't have to have the states in there to get the full credit, but it's always good to have those in there. So once again, I hope you learned something. hope you appreciated this. If you did, uh, please give me a thumbs up, and I hope to see you again on my channel. I'm going to be going through all these questions, so subscribe so you don't miss a thing. I hope to see you back again on my channel where we can learn some more chemistry together.